And good morning, class. So for today, we'll be looking at topic three, uh, advancing our understanding of space. Um, the, this last topic is uh, topic is pretty long, so I, I will divide it into two topics. Okay, and that's why in, in um, your news feed, you will see you know, topic three and then topic four. So it's pretty much like topic three A and then topic three B. So for today, we'll be looking at, so this is the first part of topic three, and this will be the last topic for space. Uh, so topic three will be advancing our understanding of space. Okay, so how will you get into space? Okay, well, you can use a space elevator. So what they're, what they're proposing now is, you know, attaching something on Earth. And then this will be attached to a satellite or whatever it is that will hold this straight, like keep this straight, right? And and as the Earth rotates, it the idea is for for it to be synchronized with the rotation of the Earth. So uh, so it's an elevator. So basically, they will they will use obviously uh, straw materials that will you know pull or push the the elevator up and then pull it down after. Okay. Well, the problem is, I mean, there are there. I mean, a possible problem would be it will, you know, as as the Earth moves, this part can be left behind. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so that is a possibility. So those are the things that they need to be uh, looking at. And uh, and if it's worth doing, that's another thing. Okay, next one. Um, okay, so like said, the typical way of, you know, putting people in space is by using rockets like this one, right? So up to crew members can can launch return to Earth from the ISS. So three crews will go to the ISS, and then three crews will go down. Um, I think maximum six in ISS, and and it's a heavy launch system. So you have you have tons and tons and tons of fuels. Okay. Um, yeah, and that's what that makes it really really heavy. Now ion drives. It, okay, so this one they're thinking of using this when when. Uh, the space vehicle is in space already. Okay, engines that use a xenon gas instead of chemical fuels. Because the thing is, with iron drives, it will not create that much, you know, thrust in order to push the vehicle and to escape the uh, the gravity of uh, Earth's gravity. There's, there's no way. There's no way it can be used here, but it's very good when you use it up there. Okay, xenon is electrically charged, accelerated, and emitted as exhaust, like this one, and it will slowly push the push the vehicle. Now the advantage is it's lighter. Okay, the disadvantage, so it's lighter. Uh, the thrust lasts a long time. So, well, the thing is, since there's no there's no resistance, the more you use it, okay, that steady increase of speed. Since you will have less resistance, then eventually you will be very very fast. Right, because there's no stopping your acceleration. Okay, uh, but it will take time. So amount of fuel will be one tenth of what is used. Smaller fuel tanks, so that's one. Maybe that that will make it faster too because it's smaller. Um, the disadvantage is it's weaker. Okay, uh, it's ten thousand times weaker than the chemical fuel. Now another technology that they're thinking. Okay, if we will explore other planets or other other stars, then maybe we can use solar sails. So what is solar sails? It's like an umbrella. It's like an umbrella pointed towards the sun, like the inside pointed towards the sun, and captures that light coming from the sun. So we all know um, that light uh, produces, or light carries energy. So when you go outside, you can actually do this. When you go outside, you feel the heat of the sun. Um, that's light. When it hits you, transfers the energy, and that energy is converted, in, um, converted in the form of heat. So you feel that heat, right, when you're under the sun. So same thing. For solar sails, so you have your umbrella-like structure. Light hits it, okay, and then that the light is absorbed by that. So you have those small explosions, and if you will have trillions, billions, you know, trillions and trillions and trillions of those small explosions, eventually it will push the solar sails this way and make it really fast. So that's the goal, okay? So um, so would we'll use sun um, sun's uh, light energy. It is made of carbon fiber, which is very, very strong and very light. Capture the photons, energy transmitted, causes the spacecraft to move. Um, the advantages will be no fuel needed, you just need the sun. The disadvantage, you probably guessed already, you know, for those who have um, solar calculators or solar, whatever, a solar chargers or whatever, you always need the sun, right? So still need to fuel, well, 
obviously the first disadvantage is you, you need to put it in space by by you know burning fuel and then the second one you need the power of the sun so the less the less sunlight you get the less power you have right so that's the thing um hey, uh, next one okay so another way of launching will be you're using the orion multi-purpose crew vehicle so these are these they're moving towards reusable right uh, part of cons um, constellation program that was carried forward um, they will use this for deep space exploration okay um, it's a heavy lift launch meaning um, they will need huge amounts of fuel huge rockets exploration beyond the earth's orbit so they will go beyond the earth's orbit for uh, for this one and they will use this and and hoping that this will still be reusable x prize so this is a competition that has been done for for years already and um I don't know if you've seen that space launch, um, I don't know, a couple of days ago. It's a SpaceX. Um, so they did um, they did put um, two astronauts um, in a rocket to you know, put them in space. Um, they're thinking of doing this commercial. So meaning if you have the money, meaning if you have the money, then maybe and probably, probably you can go to space without, you know, earning a degree, without studying physics, without being an astronaut. Okay, so 10 million price. So the condition will be this: to so launch, launch a piloted, privately funded spaceship. Okay, it should be able to carry three people to 100 kilometers and then return safely to Earth. So repeat the launch with the same space, the same ship within two, two weeks. Okay, so that's that's the goal in in order to make um you know space flight commercialized and open to uh, the public. Not only to astronauts. Spaceship One. So that's a that's the um, so that's a contest. If you wanna watch it, just go to YouTube and watch it. Um, next one, same thing. Google Lunar. Okay, now we're looking at telescopes now. Telescopes are the, the first, obviously the first instruments used to observe the movement of the stars and uh, um, and to observe the night sky. So it will allow us to see faint objects. Okay, see distant objects. See it in high degree of detail. And, and and that's how helpful um, telescopes are. So we have two types of telescopes. Okay, the first type is optical telescopes. So obviously, optical meaning it uses light. It gathers light and focuses focuses the light in order for us to see. Um, it can be made of mirrors or it can be made of lenses. Now I will tell you what the difference is. A little difference, the difference between those two. Um, so the first the first um, telescope is a refracting telescope so basically refracting when you bend the light uh, first telescope produced uses convex lenses so it bends the light and eventually focuses it so and, and the amazing thing about refracting mirrors the bigger the refracting sorry not mirrors refracting lens the bigger the convex lens the more light it can absorb the more the clearer you will see right so that's the thing now, the problem with refracting uh, uh, telescopes uh, that uses convex lens, if the middle part is thicker, it will become heavier. So the bigger it is, so if it's small, it's okay. Okay, it's pretty much straight. But the bigger it is, and then the heavier the middle part is, it will start to sag. Now, when it starts to sag, then you will have a distorted image. So that's why refracting telescopes are not as um they're not they're not good when you're creating like huge telescopes right limit the size of the lens that can be used so it has a limit okay next one is reflecting and you've probably seen a lot of these when you when you watch movies right uh people looking at the stars so, but, uh, the amazing thing with this one is if they're not looking straight from you know the end of the telescope like this one if this is refracting we'll use this but if it's if this is reflecting telescope, we'll we'll use this. So we'll look at here and then pointing to the stars, right? The same thing. Um, because reflecting uses mirrors. Okay, so it has a huge mirror here that will absorb the light and focus this, and that's why you're looking from this part of the telescope. Okay, and not from the very end. Okay, next one. Um, so in order to in order to create a huge refracting telescope. Okay, what they did was they used segments. So I have here, um, I have a project lately and I'm using a lot of blue sticks. Um, so I have here one part of one blue stick. So what they did is this is one segment of the mirror. 
or the lens okay and then you will combine them to create a lens like this like this right so you have so this will be your mirror okay um so obviously it needs a lot of tweaking a lot of work but i mean at least at least by using segments you will not have you like the middle part will not start to the middle part will not start to sag okay and next one okay so this was used by hubble space telescope um, um you can learn more about hubble space telescope by you know uh youtube some videos and i you know i will, I will be attaching links uh, for you guys to uh to watch now another type of telescope is radio telescope uh so this is um used for collecting and analyze uh, uh collect and analyze radiation in the form of radio waves so radio waves is here radio waves will have longer wavelengths lower frequency okay objects in space um in space emit both visible and non-visible light so when we see the color of the stars those are visible lights uh but there are waves that are emitted um, in space to like gamma ray gamma ray is emitted ultraviolet will be coming from the sun okay and then some radio waves too okay and infrared okay so let's take a look at um the discussion on the radio waves radio waves are received from all solar bodies nebulae nebula stars galaxies and planets okay so receiver is made from metal mesh like this one and then they will try to analyze the signal coming from those stars the advantage is you don't need to uh you don't need the sun for this one right like an like optical devices they will need the sun for this one you just you know just put the uh uh, put the detector there and then you're good right but to put the, the radio telescope there and you're good signals detected at any time so it can be you know 24 hours like 7 24 7 365 days in a year right not reliant on visible light not affected by the atmosphere it's not it's not affected by clouds weather pollution um can be made very large right because it's not a refracting lens it's not a convex lens convex lens not made of fragile glass okay so you can you can create a huge one like this one right the size of a small you know mountain um inferometry inferometry is when you combine telescopes for greater power right it improves resolution and the ability to this to see distinct points so like for this one if if they are if they will be able to combine the images formed by the telescopes here um very large array of radio so radio telescopes here look at that so it covers huge amounts of area so and, and, they, and then you will have a bigger chance of collecting or maybe you can intensify or amplify the the signals that you're getting from space okay um yeah and then yeah we'll continue with part two um station god bless